The prelude to our story begins with us seeing a psychiatric hospital named North Bend. We travel along its dimly lit interior from someone's point of view. We stop near a room that belongs to a lady named Tammy. She sits on her bed. Soon she becomes nervous, which makes her get up. She screams, before being held by a dark figure we don't see. It seems to claim her. After that, we learn this is taking place in Oregon, in the year 1966. A police car rides on the road. As it passes by, a young lady hides behind a tree. It seems like she's hiding from the law. Then she starts running through the woods. It looks like her destination is a house. She lights its curtains on fire with matches. The house is burning, and she watches this destructive event. Shortly after, the police spot her standing there. When they arrive, they try to take the girl away. She struggles, but they manage to force her into the car. The next scene has an ambulance taking her to the psychiatric hospital we saw earlier. She gets escorted inside on a gurney. In there, her pictures get taken, along with us learning her name is Kristen. A staff member named Roy starts taking her to her room. He lets her know early on that he can be her friend or her enemy. It all depends on her. Afterward, he hands her over to Nurse Lunt. They walk through the recreation room, with Lunt informing Kristen of the hours that it is open. She gets taken to the room that was once Tammy. The nurse simply erases Tammy's name to put Kristen's in its place. Placing the newcomer in her bed, Lunt advises her to sleep. While she does, we observe somewhere that is engulfed in flames. Perhaps it's our protagonist's dream. Stranger than her dream is that something takes her blanket away. It causes her to wake up looking for it. Of course, there's hardly a place to look, except under her bed. So she finds it there. In addition to the blanket, Kristen finds some small metal cubes that have letters on them. If arranged correctly, they could spell out a name. In the morning, a man enters her room to see she's lying on the floor. His first words to the newcomer are that most patients prefer the bed. He is Dr. Gerald Stringer. Nurse Lunt also enters, asking how Kristen slept. All she can reply with is asking who came into her room last night due to her blanket situation. Yet the doctor assures her that the room was locked all night. Next the nurse gives her some pills, which Kristen is required to take. Gerald adds that they are to help her get better, but she shows the authority figures how she feels about them having power over her by throwing them on the floor, prior to stepping on them. That's what makes her feel better. Seeing such rebellious behavior, Lund advises the newcomer to follow the rules. Kristen then asks the doctor why she is there. Interestingly, he responds that this is the $64,000 question. Following this, Kristen walks into the recreation room. She sees other girls there in her age group. One of them asks who the new girl is and the reply is that Kristen is a runaway. The girl who responded is curious as to how long she will last. The girl who asked is Emily, who comes to Kristen, asking who she is. Kristen gets off to a great start by saying she is no one, before walking away. Emily follows her, curious to know why she's there. She also wants to know if she will save them, saying this prompts her to mockingly imitate something spooky. At that moment, another girl comes to Emily, telling her to stop scaring the newcomer. That girl is Iris. Emily and the jigsaw puzzle girl make fun of her by saying she found a new girlfriend. They also make vomiting gestures. Shortly after, Roy appears to tell Kristen to come with him. In Gerald's office, he wants to know what happened yesterday. The first thing the girl remembers is fire. She recalls nothing before that. He asks about the farmhouse, why she went there. We learn there is an address for the place written on the palm of her hand. He even shows her a photo of it. Kristen doesn't know if she has been there. He wants her to know that burning down the house won't destroy her unpleasant memory. To that, she becomes emotional, harshly dropping the photo he gave her. If he lets her go, she will stay out of trouble. She also says she's not crazy. Then she tells him she knows someone is behind the mirror there. We see there is a recording machine behind it. Once the doctor looks in that direction, Kristen steals a sharp object from his desk. Later, she sits in her room and Roy watches the girl take her pills. Of course, after he leaves, she takes the pills out of her mouth to place them inside her pillow cover. She follows this action by taking out the sharp object she stole to use it on the door lock. In a few seconds, she gets it to open. Stepping out into the dimly lit hallway, Kristen heads for more doors that block her way. She attempts to open them too, yet her luck runs out in the form of Roy taking her from behind. It isn't a problem for him to throw her back into her cell. After that, we observe someone walking in the hallway from our point of view again. Kristen sits up in her bed to see someone's face quickly move away from her window. She comes to look, but no one is there. In the morning, Roy brings her new clothes. Kristen joins the girls for breakfast while wearing them. At that table, she sees one of them feeding a stuffed rabbit, causing her to ask about it. Emily tells her that the girl, Zoe, is crazy, like everyone there. The girl that looks like a princess, Sarah, disagrees with that derogatory statement. However, Emily just sings loudly in her face. This prompts Sarah to put her hand over the wild girl's mouth. Since Emily bites it, Iris is forced to break up the fight. These are the kind of people Kristen will have to learn to deal with. Outside, Iris comes to the newcomer, saying she wants to draw her. So Kristen lets her do it. As she sits, she sees a man with a woman looking at them from a window. Emily joins her on the bench to inform her they are the sad people. Iris says she overheard the staff saying that Gerald is doing experimental therapy with them. At that moment, Kristen says she saw a girl walking around in the hall last night. 
Iris, telling her that it's impossible, lets us know they aren't aware of the menacing being that exists there. Emily then starts singing again, prior to leaving. Iris recommends that she should not let this place get to her. At a different hour, Sarah puts on a record and dances to the music. Iris joyfully joins her. Of course, Emily won't waste an opportunity to unwind either. They all do it, except for our heroine. But she's not entirely unaffected, she does smile. Unfortunately, heavy thunder brings a blackout, taking this fun moment away from them. Zoe comes to Kristen to be hugged. Being childlike, she is scared of the dark. It doesn't take long for the lights to return. Yet the dancing does not resume. After that, Kristen sneaks into the nurse's area to look for something. Emily comes too, stealing a pack of cigarettes from a purse. If Kristen is there doing something wrong, why not her too? Soon Sarah enters, to tell them somewhat playfully that they are not supposed to be there. When Emily leaves, Sarah tells the newcomer to be careful of what choices she makes there at the hospital. In the shower room, once Kristen is left alone, a zombie-looking girl grabs her by the neck. She screams, causing Lunt to hear it. Entering the shower room, she listens to Kristen explaining what took place. Afterward, Kristen sits elsewhere, about to receive an injection from the stern nurse. The young lady pleads to be believed regarding what she experienced. Though this isn't the place where a patient gets believed easily, especially concerning what Kristen claimed to see. Therefore, she receives the injection. Then she finds herself being rolled in a gurney. It leads into a room where Gerald gives her something to bite on. He does that because what comes next is the dreadful electroshock therapy. The poor girl has to go through it. On the following day, all the girls gather for their group meeting with the doctor. Emily comes in looking eccentric, having excessive lipstick over her mouth to perhaps mimic the makeup of a clown. She is the first to ask a question, which regards what they did to Kristen. Gerald just says it's nothing to be alarmed about. Yet Emily says sometimes people don't come back, like Tammy. Iris informs Kristen that Tammy is the last girl who got out. This arouses Kristen's curiosity as to who she is. Gerald ignores her and talks to Zoe. The girl just shows him her tongue with a penny on it. Considering the shower incident, the doctor wants to hear their opinions. Sarah says she didn't see anything. Emily, however, believes Kristen. Later, as the girls occupy the recreation room, Iris comes in to excitedly announce she is off to her last session with the doctor. Sarah doesn't believe her, because Iris hasn't been there as long as she has. We learn that Iris did not directly hear that she will be getting released. She was just told by Gerald that she's making great progress. On that basis, she thinks she's going home. Emily tells her she's not going anywhere. This revelation causes Kristen to become curious. She wants to know how Iris behaved to get to this point. All Iris can say is that she didn't act cured, she just is. Once Lunt comes to collect Iris, the girl skips down the hall in excitement. The next scene has Iris in Gerald's office. He looks at the drawings of the artistic girl, prompting her to ask with slight apprehension how he got them. After looking at two of her sketches of himself and Lunt, he looks at a grim sketch of the hallway with a shadowy figure. Iris says it's an old drawing. She adds that she's not like that anymore. The doctor gets up to shut the blinds, before activating a metronome on his desk. It should help her relax, he says. The man wants her to focus on her home, along with her parents. He asks her to describe it. She sleepily says they reside in a little white house. The last thing he tells her is that it's a certain day in September, in the year 1958, and she is asleep in her bedroom. A staff member then comes in to take her away, but finds she's not in the doctor's office. Gerald enters, not seeing her either. He orders the man to find her. After that, we see Iris restrained in a wheelchair, being rolled away somewhere. She looks up to discover the one taking her is the lifeless girl. This fuels her with fear. When they are in another room, the unknown lifeless girl uses a long sharp utensil to take Iris's life. The scene switches to Kristen sitting with Zoe, as the latter has her thumb in her mouth like a baby. They watch a cartoon suited for the kind of children she's imitating. Soon, Zoe holds her rabbit, making it look like the stuffed toy is asking Kristen where Iris is. At that point, Lunt comes to them and Kristen asks Zoe's question. Yet the nurse, keeping on with her authoritative behavior, only says it's time for bed. At night, we see a girl restrained in a dark room. A door opens in front of her, to show someone who can hardly be seen. Upon morning's arrival, Kristen asks the girls if they have seen Iris. Emily thinks she may have gone home. Sarah doesn't believe it. Kristen goes into her room, seeing her sketchbook there. She yells out to Lunt, asking where Iris is. But the nurse doesn't answer her. She just turns around to walk away. Kristen also asks, if she went home, why is her sketchbook there? Still no answer. Emily is there, smoking one of the cigarettes she stole. She wants the newcomer to know that no one will tell her anything at the ward. Then Kristen takes the sketchbook to her room. Looking through it, she sees the sketches of all the girls there. One of them is of a girl named Alice, someone Kristen has never seen. Another sketch of Alice shows her as a zombie. This is most likely the girl who haunts the hospital. This prompts her to take out the metal cubes from under her bed to arrange the letters in proper order. They spell out Alice's name. In the doctor's office, she asks him about Alice. She thinks that's who attacked her in the shower room. Having learned enough, she wants to know how many girls have vanished at the hospital. She asks if they are deceased, because there's a ghost in the ward. Furthermore, she knows the other girls have seen her too. All Gerald can say is that he can't give her the answers, she has to find them herself. Since he said it that way, we know he should know something. This angers Kristen, to the point of having her knock some things off his desk. 
Due to that, Roy comes in to take her away. In the recreation room, she comes to the girls to ask about Alice. Suddenly, they become somewhat alerted on hearing that name. It's like saying it is taboo. Kristen yells at them, wanting the girls to look at her. Yet Sarah starts walking away. Talking to crazy people isn't for her. For her rude behavior, Kristen comes to her to smack her down. This causes Emily to inform her that Alice was one of them. However, she is gone now. She adds that she's gone, in the form of being released. Hearing that, Kristen takes control by announcing she will leave tonight. She asks Zoe for her penny, and the girl gives it to her. She also says that she won't let them leave, probably meaning Alice. At night, we see Kristen wasn't joking about leaving, because she's in Emily's room, placing a piece of paper inside the indentation where the door's lock enters. That way, she will be able to open the door without a key. She goes over the plan with Emily, that she will come to get her later. Afterward, we see Kristen fake taking her pills again. She doesn't even place them in her mouth. During a safe nightly hour, she comes to get Emily. The duo quietly makes their way through the hallway before entering the washroom's final stall. That is where Zoe's penny becomes useful. Kristen uses it to undo the screws holding the metal net that blocks the ventilation shaft. After taking it off, they both venture inside, making their way through. A staff member soon shines his flashlight above because of the sounds they are causing. Luckily, Kristen hides in time. The duo eventually arrives at another area, and they exit the shaft. Meanwhile, Lunt passes Kristen's room, finding it open. What's worse is that she finds the paper in the indentation. Following this, the two girls enter a morgue room. They hear someone coming, which prompts them to hide. They hide in separate places. As Kristen hides in a dark room, we witness a grotesque hand rising behind her, though it doesn't do anything to her. Shortly after, she exits the room, calling out to Emily. One of the morgue units shakes, thinking it could be Emily in there. Kristen anxiously opens it, but the unit is empty. It's empty until a hand descends to scare her. Now Kristen runs away, forgetting all about being stealthy. When she arrives at the lobby, seeing a man behind the counter reminds her that she has to stay hidden. His walking away is her cue to start running. She almost makes it to the exit. Unfortunately, she hears a child's voice calling out to Alice. It causes her to turn around, where she sees no one. Turning back, Kristen sees the ghost zombie girl. The latter uses her power to throw Kristen to the floor, making the girl lose consciousness. She momentarily wakes up to see Roy standing above her. We then see the person we saw briefly, coming to that unknown restrained girl in the dark room. It looks like he intends to violate her. In the morning, Kristen awakens in her room. She feels the pain in her head from when she hit the floor. Emily comes to her, getting asked by Kristen what happened. She learns that Emily was caught by the staff. At this point, our heroine thinks Iris is gone, and she's not coming back. She also thinks that if they don't leave the hospital, their fate is no different from Iris's. To that, Emily tells her the dreadful news that no one gets out. After that, Sarah comes to Roy to seduce him. Yet he wants her to understand there is no way he would ever date her. Shortly after, she comes to Kristen to tell her she could have gotten them all in trouble with her attempt at escaping. She gives a hard time to all of them, including the innocent Zoe. Then she starts walking away while looking at herself in her small mirror. To her dismay, it shows her the zombie girl is behind her. Of course, Sarah becomes scared and she runs elsewhere. She peeks from the window to see where the ghost girl is. Alas, she is behind her, wrapping her hands around the poor girl's face. The next scene has Sarah waking up restrained in another room. She starts pleading to be set free. The decayed ghost is there, who Sarah calls Alice. Sarah says that something wasn't her idea. Despite what she says, Alice gives her intense electroshock therapy. It's so strong that she starts frying. In the meantime, Kristen wonders where Sarah is. Emily says that if Alice got her, she will get them all. This scares Zoe to the floor. At that moment, Kristen takes her rabbit, finding Alice's initials on its foot. Zoe tells her that it was the other girls who did something to Alice. Coming to Emily, Kristen demands to know what Zoe means by that. Since Emily cannot answer, Zoe ends up informing her. She starts by saying Alice was a bad girl who hurt them. We get a flashback of Zoe coming to Alice to tell her she knows where her rabbit is. It's in Tammy's room. Therefore, Alice rushes into that room to see the girl with her stuffed toy. Sarah is there to put a bag over Alice's head. The other girls enter to help deal with the struggling girl. The only one who doesn't join is Zoe, who instead collects the rabbit. That is how she came to be its possessor. The innocent girl cries, watching all of them suffocate Alice. Out of the flashback, Kristen wonders why Alice is after her, because she didn't do anything to her. Emily then runs off, making the other two follow her. In the washroom, she threatens them with doing something disturbing. That is when Alice appears to do it for her. With nearly all the girls gone, Zoe is scared for her life. This forces Kristen to come up with a plan. In the next scene, she holds a knife to Zoe in front of Lunt. She demands to have the door open, leaving the nurse no choice. She rushes to open it, but not before reporting the incident. Kristen makes progress going through the hospital, holding Zoe hostage as part of their plan. Unfortunately, the ground she covered soon comes to a halt due to Roy appearing to deal with the situation. Two staff members hold Kristen against a wall, and Lunt is about to inject her. The doctor enters the scene to order the nurse to stop. He wants to cure her, yet Lunt thinks she's incurable. Shortly after, Kristen manages to break free, only to be caught by Gerald. The nurse ends up giving the girl the injection after all. Following this, Kristen is secured within a straitjacket. 
This time, the pills are forced into her, there's no spitting them out now. Once she's alone, she struggles for a short time prior to freeing herself from her restraint. The hospital should get a more resistant straitjacket. What comes next is her attempt to vomit out the pills. Later, the nurse enters her room because she doesn't see Kristen inside. However, she stands beside Lunt, using this opportunity to knock her out. After that, she knocks out Roy with Lunt's flashlight. Then she takes Zoe to run with her. As they're running, the persistent Roy refuses to lose consciousness for long. So he starts chasing the girls. They take the elevator, while he takes the stairs. The doors open for them, but Roy is there to prevent their escape. They have to rush back and to enter another floor, from which they use an alternate route for their escape. Eventually, the duo enters somewhere there is a small elevator. It's probably not even meant for people, yet dire circumstances call for dire measures. Zoe starts using it first. Sadly, as the poor girl gets transported by it, Alice appears. Soon one of the staff enters the room where Kristen waits. He tries to open the barricaded door. Upon breaking through, he is too late. Kristen escapes in the elevator. When she exits into another room, she calls out to Zoe. Instead of her, Kristen finds a trail of blood. It leads her to Alice, who pushes Kristen back. She is forced to run from the stronger antagonist. Alas, running does not work too well. Alice gets to her, to give the sole survivor more beating. Kristen may be weaker, though she uses an emergency axe to hack into the menace's chest. Alice suffers from her wound until she collapses. Afterward, Kristen enters the doctor's office, which is a mess. There, she finds information on Alice. Supposedly, the girl had multiple personalities. They are listed as being all the girls in the ward, with Kristen being the sixth one. At that crucial moment of discovery, Gerald comes behind her. Angered by all this madness, she takes a piece of glass with which to threaten the man. He needs to give her some answers. So that is exactly what he starts giving her. Kristen's name, he says, is actually Alice. From hearing that, she eases off him. He hands her a folder that contains an article about her past. While she observes it, he says she was abducted from her home on September 3rd, in the year 1958. It's the date we heard about earlier. She is the restrained girl we saw a few times in the dark room. But what person could believe such a statement being told about them? She tells him she's Kristen, not Alice. The doctor retaliates that she was chained in the basement of a farmhouse for nearly two months. It is the one she burned down. Her singular escape was into deluding herself, because of what she was forced to experience there. Her psyche fractured. Gerald tells her she has multiple personality disorder. Each personality took a piece of her trauma to lock it away from her. Yet those personalities became overly dominant, to the point of eclipsing Alice. After seven years of therapy, the members of the hospital were able to isolate her different identities. As he talks, we see it was Alice who was running away while threatening others to engage in self-harm, instead of Kristen running with Zoe as her hostage. When we saw the girls losing their lives, that was actually a method of eliminating Alice's personality. Kristen soon appeared to be Alice's strongest personality. Her function was to protect the delusion. Of course, Kristen cannot believe this, she feels too real to be fake. At that point, Gerald activates the metronome, causing Kristen to become sleepy. Then Alice appears to fight her, and it results in both of them falling out of the window. The staff rushes out to tend to Alice, because that is who we see now. She is no longer a decayed zombie. Kristen has vanished, due to Alice accepting her identity. Alice was always portrayed as a zombie because zombies are not completely lifeless, and Alice, being the vessel of all her personalities, can never truly go away. Thus she haunted her fake personas like an indestructible zombie. After that, we see the doctor with the man and the woman we saw previously. He shows them his documentation on a projector. Soon enough, the man tells him to stop it. He is curious to know if Alice is cured. Gerald tells him she might need a lifetime of therapy. However, he thinks she's no longer a danger to herself. According to him, she is their daughter again. The parents then stand beside Alice while she's in bed. This time, she recognizes them as her parents. Roy brings her a box of her belongings. He also gives her the bracelet with her name on it. Once Gerald comes to her, she tells him she thinks she remembers everything. She wants to go home, which is something she'll be able to do in a few days. She looks at her sketchbook to find Kristen there. Alone in the room, she goes to open the washroom window, only to have Kristen come out to haunt her. That part of Alice was seemingly too strong to destroy. Kristen demands to stay alive. 